Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you the last iteration that I had for the solenoid based graver and I will mainly show you uh, the final design that I came up with. This is the, the nano graver board. Uh, now I have a Arduino Nano on the board. It's a custom board. You can find the link on GitHub for all the builds here that I'm going to show. I decided to go this route because the other one that was based on the 328P had to have the bootloader uh, uh, just burn in the, into the microchip, so it was not something that was easy. So with this way, every, all the schematics are integrated into this one and I can just put it Darwin Nano and everything else is here. We have the converter, we have the MOSFET bridge. And then we have also the pins for the control board that is this one. This is the, the one that has all the potentiometers and the buttons. And they are inside this box here. I'm going to show you in a bit. And with this, uh, it was enough for me to just do everything that I needed, like five millimeter uh, channel setting, some uh, pave two millimeters. I also had some that are one millimeter stones, uh, two millimeters, 1.5. And you can check my previous videos because I have some of the, the examples of what I was able to achieve, like this ring here, one millimeter stones on the side and two millimeter stones on the top. So, and and the, the board already has a, a protection diode to prevent reverse polarity from happening. And we have also some limited vo voltages on the tracers. Uh, you can only go to 1.5 amps. I widened the, the traces here on the, the circuit board. The, we have some options on that the buttons here. Uh, apart from on, having all, only five pot three potentiometers and three buttons, the board can have way more uh, buttons, three more buttons here, but I reduce it because I don't use them that much. So I just went to the ones that I'm, I'm going to use. I don't need more than what I need. So I will going to explain the everything here because this is the box that I that I have that I made. I have a tape here because I had the wrong tolerances before the drawing on the on github is already updated and with this i we can go from i will try to match the the board here the board is like this inside and then we have the the power in that is this side the pedal that is here i'm using an m audio pedal but you can use anything that is 3D printed and up to 10K ohms resist resistance. I already built in the on off switch here on the side because I don't have to have a weird wiring. And here I have two, and two exits for the solenoids and a switch to switch the direction and between hand pieces. This is the, are the headers for the controller board. They match exactly each other so you don't have to twist cables and so on the voltage here is limited by the the converter i'm using a a converter that uh, converts up to 30 volts to 5 volts for the arduino it's more than enough we're not going to use that much power in the arduino so this handled pretty well and i believe that this is this is the final version okay if you have any tips please just just tell me in the comments uh, even uh, when i think that is the might be the final version you might have some better ideas we because when we are used to working do the same thing over and over we forget to think to think about alternatives okay so now i'm going to show you how it it works i'm using a 19 volts 3.5 amps uh, power supply here on the back and the uh, M-Audio, I'm going to put the, the pedal here on top today because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. Uh, the, the, the current is limited by your solenoid. Since I have a, a 19 uh, volts 
a power supply unit and a 36 ohms uh, resistance inside the, the solenoid, I won't get more than 0 0.5 amps of current here. So it might vary for you and you might want to check what you're going to use it for, how you're going to design your hand base. I have three designs on, inside my, my GitHubs that, that you can use freely. I just want to be helpful to you. And okay, let's turn it on. I'm using a GX, I believe it's GX16 connector here because it stays in place and it's not going anywhere. And I'm turning the machine. I built in a light to see if it was on or off. So it was easy for me if I turn off the lights from my workshop, I can see if the machines were still on. And I have some knobs here that, that I'm going to show you that can be applicable to any solenoid that you have. And the buttons. So mainly right now, this, we, uh, this is my trusty handpiece. I've been using it for three years now. And yeah, it's been a long journey and it's still going strong. I don't see a reason that I need to update it. Uh, apart from the ones that I already showed you before. And we have some modes here. This, uh, I will going to explain the knobs first. The first knob is the frequency, the maximum frequency for the solenoid. The second one is the duty cycle. What's the percentage of the whole cycle that is going to be on or off. And the third one is a PWM voltage regulator. So if you want to have a lower voltage handpiece, you can just uh, turn it off, turn it down here. I can use a 19 volt PSU for a 10 volt, uh, 10 volts solenoid. Okay, this is the pedal. Let's go for the first mode. By default, it just goes to the direct mode. That is the, a variable frequency on, on the foot pedal. And the maximum frequency at the end, it's determined by the frequency knob here. So it goes from zero to 50 Hertz. So you can choose here what, what is going to be the solenoid that you're going to use. So if it go, goes to that side, um, this one's connected to the other side, so it's not going to work, but you can flip the switch and it, it's going to work on the hand piece that you want. I use this because sometimes I want some, I have a big solenoid that gives a punch so I can do bezel setting in big stones. I've used it twice. But since it might be something that someone is going to use, I already built in here. So let's go for the maximum frequency here. You can, I will turn down the frequency so you can realize that everything works in real time. You don't have to remove the, your feet from the paddle. And the dirty cycle will, will determine the power to the solenoid. So you can reduce it and it's not even heating, but you can go up and, and feel that this is the best configuration for a handpiece. So if you go more than this, you're going to be wasting energy in form of heat and it's going to heat up pretty fast. But if it's on the optimum, optimal side here. I always leave like this and the maximum voltage that is 19 volts for this 12 volt solenoid and I will go just all the way up on the frequency. So for the second button here we have the first button is the the mode for variable pedal. The second mode is direct mode with, which means that this is going to go at directly to the maximum frequency that you're set and with all the configurations from the two knobs. So just a touch in the pedal already goes to the maximum one. Just, just for you to see, uh, the, the knob is still working here. If you want to have something that is slowly just punching, is something that you can do or if you want to 
you have something that is going to go ahead straight away in the maximum frequency, it will be there. And the third mode is when I'm bezel setting and I want to give some controlled pulses or I'm marking the holes in the metal to be drilled. I use the third one that it gives a control number of pulses based on the frequency here for half a second and then it stops for another half second. So the frequency knob is the one that will determine how many impacts it will have. Apart from it, you have the regular uh, adjustment here in the back of the handpiece. If you want to just do final work, you can just put all the way down and it will be super soft. And according to what, what you are opening here, the impacts are going to get heavier and heavier. And this is the maximum that I can go, otherwise it will just fall under the like some resonance inside the handpiece and it won't go all the way and hit the, the collet. Um, and that's it. Uh, you can check all the other videos that I have so you can see for yourself if you is something that you were interested. Please give some comments in the description and below if you want to contribute with some something that I might have missed. And I would, would like to thank to William II, uh, Alastair Duncan, and also Sean Hughes for the inspiration that they gave at the beginning. Uh, some of them have better interfaces. It would be sure to check the William II interface because it did a job that I would never be able to do in terms of uh, how to control it, everyone, everything and to have a display. And it's super interesting. Uh, give a like or dislike so I can see if I'm on the right track and have a great year. Thank you.